Biceps pathology. The biceps muscle has two tendons in the shoulder, the long head and the short head. Pain at the front of the shoulder commonly occurs from conditions affecting the long head of the biceps tendon. The biceps tendon of the long head arises from the superior labrum at the top of the glenoid. It passes underneath the transverse humeral ligament in a groove between the lesser and the greater tuberosity of the humerus. As you can see here in transverse view ultrasound, you can see the biceps tendon in the groove and the subscapularis tendon medially and the supraspinatus tendon laterally. And you can see the transverse humeral ligament covering the biceps tendon. The biceps tendon inserts into the proximal radius at the radial tuberosity at the elbow. Here you can see the insertion of the biceps tendon at the radial tuberosity. And the biceps tendon is inserted into the ulnar part of the tuberosity. The long head take advantage and insert proximally. The short head is inserted distally, as you can see here in this diagram. The short head of the biceps arises from the crocoid process. Innervation of the biceps. The biceps muscle is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous, musculo, so that's the biceps. Cutaneous means supply sensation to the lateral aspect of the forearm. The muscular cutaneous comes from the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. So what is the function of the biceps? It is a humeral head depressor. It is a flexor of the elbow, but the brachialis also is a flexor of the elbow. If you lose the biceps, the brachialis works, but you lose some flexion with losing the biceps. The biceps is really a strong supinator of the forearm. If you lose the biceps, you lose about 40 to 50% of supination of the forearm. What are the conditions affecting the biceps? Biceps tendinitis biceps tendon rupture, biceps tendon subluxation or dislocation, and slab lesions. So let's talk about biceps tendinitis. The biceps tendinitis is an inflammation or irritation of the upper biceps tendon. It occurs due to microtrauma to the tendon and overuse and repetitive overhead activities lead to biceps tendonitis. These activities will include sports such as baseball, tennis, swimming, or lifting weights. Biceps tendonitis usually occurs in association with other shoulder problems such as shoulder impingement, that's very important. The rotator cuff tears, shoulder instability, tears of the glenoid labrum, and shoulder joint arthritis. Shoulder impingement is the main cause of biceps tendinitis. Shoulder impingement is often referred to as rotator cuff tendinitis or shoulder bursitis and the impingement is an irritation of the rotator cuff and could lead to breakdown and tear of the tendon. It could be considered an overuse syndrome. How do you examine the patient for subacromial impingement? You do the impingement provocative test.
Warn the patient before doing the test. So when testing the shoulder for possible impingement, make sure to warn the patient before beginning the examination because this may cause pain in the shoulder. The whole idea of the impingement test is that the humeral head will squeeze the rotator cuff tendon and possibly cause pain. Near impingement sign, the examiner will passively elevate the pronated arm of the patient above the level of the shoulder. A pain response due to the impingement is considered to be a positive sign. How about near impingement test? The impingement test is different from the impingement sign. Impingement test means you inject the subacromial space by local anesthesia or local anesthesia and destroys, and you can get some immediate relief of the shoulder pain. That will be a positive impingement test. When the pain symptoms are relieved and the patient feels better due to the injection. How about Hawkins test for shoulder impingement? Hawkins test is different than Hawkins sign. Hawkins sign is a sign that the talus is alive. And you can see that sign six weeks after a Taylor neck fracture, if the talus has vascularity. So how do you do the Hawkins test? Flex the shoulder and the elbow to 90 degree. Intend to rotate the shoulder, and this will bring the greater tuberosity of the humerus underneath the acromion, which could cause impingement and pain. Pain caused by this maneuver is considered to be a positive Hawkins test. In biceps tendinitis, the soft tissue between the humeral head and the acromion is pinched or is squeezed with arm movement. What are the symptoms of biceps tendinitis? Anterior shoulder pain. If you localize the pain anteriorly to the region of the biceps tendon, then the patient have biceps tendinitis. And that is best done by eliciting bicipital groove tenderness and use the speed test to help in the diagnosis. So the speed test is done by asking the patient to actively forward flex the shoulder while the forearm is spinated, while the examiner is applying resistance to the movement. Tenderness over the bicipital groove indicates biceps tendinitis. What is the treatment of biceps tendinitis? Conservative treatment, such as rest, modification of activity, ice, physiotherapy, or a steroid injection around the tendon, not through the tendon. Surgery is done if conservative treatment fails, and surgery can be biceps tenotomy. The damaged biceps tendon is released from its attachment. Then we cut the biceps tendon and let it fly. It is done in the elderly and in low-demand patients. Bicep tenotomy is also done in the elderly patient with shoulder pain and massive rotator cuff tear. It's done when the patient has reasonable active forward elevation and the cuff is irreparable and the shoulder joint has minimal arthritis. Biceps tenotomy is an effective treatment for this patient when the pain is the main symptom. And the patient may have subjective cramping and this biceps tenotomy may result in a Popeye bulge of the arm. Another surgical treatment for biceps tendinitis is biceps tenodesis. The damaged section of the biceps is removed. The remaining tendon is reattached to the humerus. It's usually done for active, young, high-demand patients. 